We've made it to Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. The Temple Mount was not this big before Herod. Herod actually extended the plateau to build a bigger temple. And then way back around the time of David, this area was actually considered the city of David. Didn't have anything uh, this side. So we're walking down the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem here. And there's a ton of Jewish graves on this because of a prophecy that the Messiah will return here. So the Jews will be ready when he comes. This road is the road that Jesus likely took from, from Mount of Olives down to the entrance of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Eastern Gate, also known as Beautiful Gate, Golden Gate, and Mercy Gate, where Jesus entered on Palm Sunday. This is part of the Garden of Gethsemane. This is the probable Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus wept um, the night before he was crucified. Some of these trees are at least a thousand years old, maybe pushing two thousand years old, so they may have been here at the time of Christ. of Jesus weeping in the Garden of Gethsemane. Garden of Gethsemane again. This is part of the private area. We've had a little chance to reflect here. Near the Garden of Gethsemane, this is the Grotto Church. And that's Yuval. So we're inside a cave, now part of a Catholic church, called the Grotto. Very well may be one of the olive presses that is in Gethsemane that Jesus and his disciples slept in and where he came back to them and then went out to be arrested from. That's the Mount of, the of Olives of Gethsemane, that we were arrested. Underneath here is the Kidron Valley. Jesus coming down the Mount of Olives. When he approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it. This church is the Church of Dominus Flavus. Looking Jerusalem, probably where Jesus stood here and wept over his city and, and foretold the destruction about 40 years later. This tree is one of the options that people have suggested that they used for Jesus' crown of thorns. I don't know if you can see, but the thorns on those branches are like two to three inches long. This is inside Church Dominus Flavus. The Lord wept. You can see the cross, and then the dome of the rock is behind it. We're under Old City Jerusalem, going down to the water supply towards Hezekiah's tunnel. They would dug this, dug this way down and then connected it to the spring, and the spring would fill this up so that they could come through the tunnel that we just walked through that came out over there, and use it as a well to pull up their fresh water. These boulders were piled up into a massive wall that protected the water source right over there where we came from. In Hezekiah, their war machine will do that and we will lose the water and lose the wall. I have to, he says, find a new way to hide the water. Chiseling a tunnel for the whole mountain. They're not coming now 10 years. So in order to make it faster, Two groups are chiseling oh. toward each other, oh. and they met in the middle. Oh. Here's a relief of Hezekiah's tunnel through the mountain. We are descending into Hezekiah's tunnel. Three stacks going down into the tunnel. Oh, we're crossing. Walking through Hezekiah's tunnel. Yeah. It's pretty high. Here's Dad walking through Hezekiah's tunnel. <laughs> so good. It's getting a little narrower. Hezekiah's tunnel is about 1,500 feet long, so about five football fields. Here's the inscription in Hebrew, ancient Hebrew, stating that they're standing where they uh, joined together, the two halves joined together. The original 2,000-year-old pavement that Jesus probably walked on. Here's a Roman storm drain. This is the Herodian pool of Salome. They can't actually dig further out, but this is where the pool would be, where Jesus healed a blind man. The people asked, what has this man done wrong? 
And uh, Jesus said nothing, and so the glory of God can be shown. And he put mud on his eyes, told him to wash in the pool down here, and he was healed. So this is the likely area of David's palace. So this was considered the most likely place for David's palace down here. You can see some ruins of Israelite houses. Look, it's the IDF. So we're getting ready to go into the Dung Gate. Jerusalem! Ooh, you can see the Temple Mount right through there. Timeline of Israel's history. This is in the museum here in Old Jerusalem, showing us art of how the old temple used to look. Bronze coins, I wonder what they would have had outside the temple when Jesus got angry and overturned the money changers. Tables. The southern end of the Temple Mount, very edge of the wall there. Some very old ruins, and then right beyond the buses there, over there is the City of David. These are the southern steps leading up to the Temple Mount. There's a few arches, those are how you got in. There's an art, half arch right over here, that's how you got out. And these steps are the very likely place that Peter addressed the crowd at Pentecost. So on the southern steps may also very well have been where Jesus walked. They went all the way over that way too. This is part of the Western Wall. You can see the stones down here that when the Romans conquered, they just threw the stones off the top. Also, this part right in here was a huge archway that went across the street, and there was actually a road on top of it for people to have access into the temple. On our way to the Jewish Quarter. This is the main square of the Jewish Center, and that's the synagogue in ruins. It was in ruins until the 60s, and then it was rebuilt. This wall, this broad wall, dates back to the time of Hezekiah and you can actually see there's some um, stones that look like residential buildings and actually in Isaiah it talks about that the houses of Jerusalem have been broken down to fortify the wall, uh, which according to archaeology looks like exactly what happened. This is the main road in the Jewish quarter, it goes north to south. It was the cardo of the Roman city. Now it's just a bunch of shops. Just walked from the Jewish Quarter, now into the Christian Quarter. Making our way through the Christian Quarter.